time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today, Sean and I are going to do a follow up video on our head gasket failure diagnosis. This video was sort of inspired by a couple guys on Toyota Facebook pages. And what they both said is why are you messing with a leak down tester and coolant pressure tester to diagnose this problem? Because you suspected coolant was getting into the combustion chamber as evidenced by smoke after a cold startup, you're getting a misfire. So instead of messing with the leak down tester and cooling system pressure tester, why not just get a block tester on there? It's really quick. You use the special fluid, you draw in air from the radiator. If the special fluid turns a different color, you then confirm that you have a head gasket or cracked head issue. And with that situation, you know the smart move is gonna to be to pull both heads off. So why are you messing with trying to determine which cylinder is the offending cylinder? You're gonna pull both heads off anyways, cause that's a smart move. I get what they're saying and yes, I do tend to agree with them that if you're getting in that far on your engine, it would be sort of silly not to remove the other head that you know is still good, but I can also see plenty of people saying, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I don't have a problem with the other head. It's the passenger head, not the driver head. So do I really want to go through the extra work of disconnecting the exhaust manifold, pulling the cams off, pulling the head off, taking it to a machine shop, getting it resurfaced, pressure tested, vacuum tested, when I know currently it's fine. There's those two lines of thought. While you're in there, you may as well do everything you can. And then there's the other line of thought. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So I don't know who's right or who's wrong. If you're operating a shop and you have paying customers, you're always gonna tell the customer, while we've got everything torn apart, you would be stupid not to do the other head and at least pull it off and pressure test it, vacuum test it, and then resurface it because you know, you're in there that far. It costs you a lot of labor to get in that far. So we should do it. But then coming from a do it yourself position, you're thinking, well, I'm doing the work myself. I'm rolling the dice that nothing's going to happen to that other head shortly down the road. And it's your choice. It's your time, your effort. So I could see people just saying like, well, I'm just gonna leave that head alone. I know my problem is the passenger head. I'm gonna leave the driver's side head alone. We're gonna show you how to use this block test, but I'm really curious what you, the viewers, think of this. What would you do in this situation? You know you have one head that's bad, whether it's a head gasket or it's cracked. While you're in there, are you gonna pull that second head and go the whole nine yards with the repair? Like I said, there's plenty of people that will do just the bare minimum to get their truck running and back on the road. Uh, an example is doing a timing belt job. A lot of people will get all the way in there, they'll replace the timing belt, they'll replace the water pump, and maybe that's all they do. They don't touch both idler pulleys, they don't touch the timing belt tensioner, they don't replace the camshaft seals, they don't replace the crankshaft seal. They're just replacing what they think is most likely going to fail and they leave everything else alone again that line of thought if it ain't broke don't fix it i'm just going to replace what i think i should replace all right i've blah blah enough now let's get out to the truck and let's show you how to use one of these block testers all right so here we have the block tester kit they're not that expensive we'll put a link in the video description of this one that i bought via amazon it comes with the instructions it comes with the testing beaker, whatever you want to call it, the test fluid, and then it comes with the bulb that you place in here and you work it like this. We're going to get to the engine and we're going to talk about all these instructions, but really briefly, it just says you're going to connect this up to your radiator or if your radiator doesn't have a radiator cap and it has an expansion tank then you would be inserting this into the expansion tank 
you're going to want the level of the coolant down a little bit, two to three inches from what the instructions say. So if your coolant is all the way to the top of the radiator or the expansion tank, you're going to want to draw some out. And you could do that with something like a turkey baster just like this. And we actually did that already on Sean's engine. We lowered the level a little bit and we just poured the excess into the overflow reservoir. You'll want the engine at operating temperature with the thermostat open. So we already got his engine warmed up and then you're gonna pour the special blue test fluid into the beaker. And it has a line right here where you fill it up to. Once you do that, you're gonna insert this bulb into the top here and you're going to insert this into the neck of the radiator or the expansion tank and then you're going to start working this thing for one minute squeezing it multiple times and you're going to see bubbles coming up a positive test that you have hydrocarbons or products of combustion that have gotten into the engine coolant the blue fluid will start turning greenish and then yellow if it's a negative test the fluid is going to stay blue and it's not going to change color on you so that's the test and it's pretty simple to do and quick and that's why those two guys were saying why don't you just do this it's so much easier than doing what you did in that other video but like i said i gave the reasons of why i would like to know which cylinder is the offending cylinder because I think it has value to the person doing the job because they might not want to do both heads. So here we go. I'm going to take this cap off and I'm going to pour some test fluid into here. And there we go. Then you're going to want to put this rubber cap back on. Push it down all the way. Now we're going to get to the engine and we're going to do the test. One other thing that the instruction says is that if you inadvertently suck some coolant into the beaker, then you have to start the test over. You'll want to lower the coolant level a little bit more with a turkey baster or whatever you've got to suck out the coolant and then put fresh test fluid back in here and then redo the test. All right, here we go. You're going to want to do this for about one minute. So this is interesting. We know from the last test we did with the leak down tester and the cooling system pressure tester, hands down, he's got an issue with the number three cylinder. But with this block system tester, we're not getting the result we thought we would. We thought we'd be seeing some yellow fluid by now. And we don't have anything yet. No signs that the fluid is changing colors. So kind of weird. We'll do it for a little bit longer and see if we can get the fluid to change color. That's another minute. Still no change in the color of the fluid. That's still looking really nice and blue. Don't know what to say about these block system testers. I've seen many videos on YouTube where the fluid did change color for them fairly quickly, like within about 20 30 seconds but for us no dice i i have to say i was expecting 100 percent based off of what we know we know there's a, a either a head gasket problem or a crack in the cylinder at the number three cylinder we know there's a problem but the block system tester isn't showing that result we should be getting a uh, color change because hydrocarbons are getting into the coolant. It's clear. But, so there it is there. We showed you how to use this thing, but we weren't able to show you an actual positive test with the fluid changing color. It's just, I feel better about the fact that we saw with our own two eyes the very poor leak down test of number three it, it had like a 46 percent loss and then seeing the cooling pressure tester rise with pressure into number three cylinder was a dead giveaway there was an issue and maybe sean's issue is very slight so it's not that apparent with one of these block testers so maybe 
as the crack got worse or the head gasket situation got worse, you'd see it with these block testers? I don't know. It was not a positive test when we know there is a problem with this engine. We're all done with this video. I don't know what to say. We couldn't show you the money shot of the fluid turning yellow with a conclusive test that we have a head gasket or cracked head issue with hydrocarbons getting into the coolant. Are these block testers that accurate? I don't know. Some people swear by them. There's quite a few videos on YouTube of people that use them, professional mechanics. So they are a tool, but seeing what I just saw right now and knowing what I know with Sean's engine, I don't know if I would 100% rely on a block tester to diagnose a head gasket issue on a vehicle. Now, if it's a massive problem and coolant is bubbling up because there's such an exchange of compression from the engine getting into the cooling system and it's just bubbling over, well, then you know it's, you clearly have a problem and you're probably going to get the special fluid to turn yellow. But in this situation, it's not giving a positive test that hydrocarbons are getting into the coolant. So it pretty much failed. This thing, this test kit failed. And we know he has an issue and we know we're gonna be pulling his heads off his engine. So to revisit what I said at the beginning of the video, there's those two lines of thought. I'm not gonna say somebody's wrong for going in that deep and stripping the top end of the engine off and not pulling off the, the other head when they know the issue is just with one head. That's their decision, it's their truck, they could do whatever they want with it. Knowing human nature, some people are gonna get in that deep and they're not gonna pull the second head off. And that's why I feel our first video of diagnosing Sean's head gasket issue has value for those people that just wanna do the minimum of what they need to do to get their vehicle back on the road and call it a day. And that's exactly what one guy did who has an excellent video series on the series that we're gonna embark on. His channel is called Worse Than Chiggers, and he did the exact thing I'm talking about. He knew he had a problem with the driver's side head, and he didn't even touch the passenger head. He left it alone. He didn't do anything with it. And so that was his choice, his truck, his choice. So with all that said, we thank you for watching Toy Out of Time with Timmy the Tool Man and Sean. We will be starting very soon on this head gasket or cracked head issue with Sean's rig. It's gonna be a multi-part video. We're gonna break it up in sizable chunks so your eyes aren't gonna be bleeding from watching a four hour long video because if you know our channel, you know we're very detailed and thorough and we're gonna cover every minute aspect of this job so you can do this job yourself. So stay tuned for that and like I said, please comment and let us know your opinion on the theory of doing auto mechanics. Are you the type that you get in deep and you're gonna replace everything you can replace and you don't care about the expenditure because you know it's the smart way to go? Or are you the type that would like, for instance, get an intake manifold off because you have a coolant leak in the valley between the heads on one of these 3.4 liter engines and you got the knock sensors right there and it's the opportune time to replace it, but you know that those knock sensors are about 500 bucks. So are you gonna be the type to change the knock sensors? Or are you gonna roll the dice and hope you don't come up snake eyes and those knock sensors aren't gonna give you an issue 100 miles down the road and you're gonna find yourself tearing all the way back in there just to replace the knock sensors and the knock sensor wiring harness. So anyways, comment and let us know what you think. Peace out. Happy wrenching, sick mods, and future sick head gasket or cracked head repairs on Sean's 2002 third gen 4 Bye-bye.